Okay, so the screen you can see now is the PC that I'm building on. It's going to boot up any moment. Yep, there it goes. And there's the grub menu. Press enter. There it is booting. So what I'm going to do is to, well, one thing I'll show you to start off with is, get out of the right mouse, is this message is the ETC issue message. So we put in welcome to and Linux is one of the variables that was put in. So cat ETC issue. You can see there's the welcome to and S is probably the system host name or the system type. Yeah, yeah this is system type, not the host, sorry. So that's what that message is there. So what I'm going to do is run StarTex to run the X window system we've just built. And there it is. Uh, not sure where the mouse has gone to. Uh, that's a bit strange, it was working before. Let's see if I can bring it up again. Oh, there it is. Uh, oh, right, I know, it's because I've got two screens plugged into the machine and the mouse must have gone on to the other one. Um, yeah, maybe if I reboot this uh, and unplug the other screen. Uh, let me just unplug it now, see if I can do StarTex. Uh, it should hopefully work without the Another screen, so let's run that again. Yeah, that's better. Now you can see the clock that's in the corner. Um, so I can move these windows about. And as I said, if you remember, the toolbar option is what makes this menu appear here. So there's various options under here that make this a bit easier to read. For example, if I do reverse video, it makes the background black and a bit easier to read, I think, certainly with the green. Also, you can change the size of the fonts. Let's do this one here. So make them a little bit bigger. Obviously, it resizes the window. To resize the screen again, click and hold that and just move the cursor to the edge. And you'll get this wireframe come up, which you can then move about. Um, that's probably it really that's useful, that I find useful. Uh, you can probably change the fonts as well, no doubt. So that's that. Um, it has actually started on uh, can't find the right virtual terminal 2, so it has to use the next free one, so I might run that last command in that I was unsure about, and hopefully that will move it to terminal t uh, terminal seven, which is the next free available one, because first six are normally used for consoles. Um, but apart from that, there's not a lot else we can do here. I'll have to go back and build some more um, via the remote PC. Um, I could do. the uh, build from here using links but again because it's a text-based browser although it's useful it's still quite hard to um, build from that and it's it is prone to error so if I go to read online the stable version so there's the contents and for example if I went to sudo you can see the links are in green um, and what's hard is to pick out the commands that because they're obviously not in boxes or highlighted so you have to read very carefully to find out what the commands are so there's the commands to configure and make and then embedded down here are the commands to install and 
uh, do some post configuration and then also in red so it's a completely different color uh, the results for or the commands for testing and checking the results so it is possible but it's certainly a lot harder to build from that so that shows anyway that the all the changes that we've done up to now all the installation has given us a graphical terminal a um, couple of other things that other toy that I, sh I told you about X eyes just a pair of eyes that follow the mouse cursor around so like I say just a little desktop toy um, and the other thing I want to show you was GLX gears is one of the demos for um, Misa and this will show you that the acceleration is working or not and you should get close to what well, it says approximately the same as the monitor refresh rate yeah there it is it's settled down now so 60 frames per second is what this refresh rate is so that's okay and if I enlarge this and wait for it to update it will have dropped because I was resizing the window it wasn't updating at that point but yeah you can see it's at that full size it's still updating at about 50 frames per second so um, that indicates that um, the hardware rendering is working uh, as it escaped to get rid of that on the window uh, another command we can use is glx info and that will also show whether hardware acceleration is in use so just scroll past all these modes that it's capable of switching to oh it's run right off the screen so let me recall uh, recall that command and put it through less so the important thing is the direct screen rendering has got yes um, the GLX version comes up so you know that the OpenGL is working shows what extensions are available and again it's got the version number there the MESA project so and then there's some more information about the um, display and so on so you can see the driver is an Intel driver um, how much video so it looks like it's given the whole of the system memory virtually to the 128 gigabytes to the video card which is seems a bit ridiculous um, but you can see the uh, OpenGL version 4.6 uh, version of the language open geo language uh, lots of information there so that tells me that the um, open geo is working and so is the acceleration as long as the I think it's the DRI is shown to be active direct rendering that shows that um, you've got the acceleration running so that looks all good and certainly using it it's responsive there's no delay or um, anything like that in fact if i do ls minus lra on roots you can see that just flicks by really quickly it's not even updating it completely it's ripping the screen that bit that's updating so it shows it's running at a good speed so what I'll do now is I'll shut this down to log out of this. You've got to have this login window active, the one that's got login in the title bar, and either do exit or control D to log out. So it's quite dangerous because it means that um, if you've got something running in the other windows and the other terminals or even other other programs open, they'll just be um, terminated immediately. So I'll shut this down. and then in a moment I'll come back up again on the remote desktop and we'll carry on building well targeting a browser next I think is probably the best thing to do okay so I've come back to this um, session where I'm doing the installation remotely um, I'm just going to do this last command here and hopefully that will 
set the default terminal to 7 when I start the GUI up. So I'm just going to do that on the screen. You won't be able to see it, but I'll just check it. Now the GUI's come up. Yeah, I've gone back to the virtual terminal 1 and I can see the status messages and where I typed in star text. I'll go back to virtual terminal 7 and that is working as it traditionally would do. So I'll just come out of that and log out. So what I'm going to do now is to carry on and try and get a web browser installed. Um, I'm going to try and do it as well, I don't know, I'd like to try and do it as basic as possible, but again, if there's um, packages to pick up on the way, um, I'll try and get them done as well. Um, as I'm hoping it will save a little bit of time. Um, so I just need to get my uh, spreadsheet up again. So that's X in it done. Um, let's just check this. Get GTK. I'm going to install that at some point. Um, right, let's go into testing configuration. It's probably basically what I've done already. Right, I can check this actually. Um, to check that the DRI came up. So let's do grep my side DRI2. Yep, there we go. So the RS driver is the one that I set up, so that's good. VD Power is working with that VAGL extension. So that looks all okay. Um, I showed you the GLX from the actual terminal, so that's okay, and all this stuff here. Um, that shows what the software rasterizer would be, but as you saw, it had um, direct rendering, so it shows that um, that was working. So there's some issues that can be resolved here. Hybrid graphics. Um, I think this is where you've got um, like an NVIDIA card with, with a built-in Intel card on laptops, some older laptops, and it decides which one's more appropriate to use to help save um, the battery or whether you want the performance or not. Um, there's some more information there about configuration. But as you saw, it worked for me, so... I don't really need to do this unless I wanted to tweak it and I don't normally do that. What what comes up is normally fine for working. Um, tuning font config. If you only read text in English and have it with common Libra fonts installed on the next page, you may never need to worry about the details of how font config works. But if you do want to tweak things, there's stuff there. Um, there's stuff about hinting and aliasing. Um, it says it does, it may improve or worsen the effects, so I won't bother with that. Um, disabling bitmap fonts. Um, well, I won't use that at the moment unless I do see that there's a problem at all. It describes here how to set up extra font directories. Um, and preferring certain fonts. So, again, anything that you might want to tweak, this is probably the page to come to. 
TTF and OTF fonts we've visited here already, um, shown how to install the Deja Vu fonts, and we've installed Cantorel fonts as well. Um, I think Noto fonts get installed, installed at some point. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any others. Exorg Legacy, we've done that. So that's really it. So I'm going to go home. And what I'm going to do is to install the Falcon web browser. Now there are warnings about some of the packages we're going to install here that is using an older version of um, a fork of the Chrome Chromium uh, project. Um, but for now, this will be fine to get us going. And then once we've got a browser, we can look at building something like Firefox in the meantime. Um, before we, you know, finally finish off installing other packages.